exactly nine. So I guess we need to start. Uh, and I believe that uh, everyone is able to hear me. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, a migration testing call. It is a migration orientation call where we are going to take uh, stakeholders through uh, the setup uh, process of the migration tool that Palladium under Kenya HFS has been developing. So um, in the call, we have uh, various stakeholders. We have representatives from MOH. We have NASCOP in the call. We have CDC, I believe, uh, a representative is in the call. Uh, and we also have uh, various partners. Uh, I think we'll confirm the attendance uh, shortly. And we also have uh, Palladium, uh, Kenya HMS project in this call. So um, at this point, I'm going to give Faith Ngari uh, a chance to take us through the agenda and also um, facilitate the next session. I don't know if Faith is in the call. Good morning, Bed and team. <coughs> Good morning. You can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay, fine. So we will proceed on with the day's agenda for the next one and a half hours, two hours. So as Bernard has said, this is a call on orientation of migration for the user group that's moving from uh, IQ Care to Kenya EMR. And uh, I can see we have good quorum, so I guess we can proceed. So as displayed on your screens, you can be able to see the agenda for the day. So we will have a roll call just to find out who's on board this call. And then after that, we will go straight to the objectives of our meeting, which I believe Dr. Oramis is on call, and she will also give a bit of her opening remarks from the NASCOP side. And then after that, we shall go to the technical overview uh, of what is expected of us in regards to migration. Um, and that is going to take us roughly about one hour. And then from there, we shall have a, a validation process during which we shall be taken through uh, what is expected of us during the migration by Patrick. Then definitely we hope to get feedback from all of you or any clarifications that you would like the team to uh, be aware about. And at the end of it all, we will hear some closing, closing remarks from our partners, uh, our key partners at CDC and also from uh, MOH. So welcome all of you to this uh, webinar. We will not take much in this. And I would like to welcome Dr. Oramisi. I hope she is on the call. Okay, as uh, we figure yep. out... Uh, Perfect, Dakari. But maybe before you give your opening remarks and then take us to the objectives, Bernard, maybe we can have a roll call just to find out which organization is represented in this call to make sure that we have everyone on board or at least 90%. Over to you, Bernard. <clears throat> All right. Uh, thank you very much, Faith. So I think I'll just go through uh, the list of the partners that we are expecting in this call. And uh, uh, we are not going to introduce all the representatives from uh, from various partners. We're just going to uh, have one person uh, tell us whether they are in the call or not. So you just confirm to us whether you are there. So I'll begin from uh, Afia Kamilisha. Do we have anyone uh, from Afia Kamilisha? You can unmute. Uh, they are joining, the joining in a few. They are joining in a few. Not yet. Okay. Anyone from CHS Tegemeza? Yes, we are here. Thank you. Anyone from Mafia Gijini? Hey everyone, um, uh, we are here. Thank you. Uh, Hope Worldwide? Yes, we are here. Thank you. Coptic Cosiptals. Anyone from Coptic? We are here. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Thank you. Uh, do you have anyone from Kogri? Yes. Welcome. Uh, Thank you. Any, anybody from UON, Crisp? Okay. Uh, UMB, Park, Tendeleza? Yes. You're welcome. Amref? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah. Okay, welcome on board. Uh, CHS Naishi? Yes, Naishi here. Karibu sana. UMB Timiza? Uh, hello, everyone. I'm in. Thank you. Uh, Anyone from Afyanyota? Yes, we are here. Busana. CHS Shinda? Good morning. CHS Shinda is in attendance. Then, if the child requires um, support, the respiratory support, of course, they'll be, given, they'll be intubated and uh, ventilated uh, in an ICU setup. For those that are with could we mute if uh, if you are not talking maybe we'll request you kindly to mute so that um, we concentrate on the call so do we have anyone from chs shinda good morning Bennett. we're in attendance all right do we have anyone from cap Up. Nobody. Uh, how about Afia Pwani? Present. Present, sir. Karibu, karibu. Bomu? Okay, we have no one from Bomu. Uh, Chapu Zima? Present. Karibu. Gima for sure. Present. Karibu. Uh, the next one is AHF. We are in. Thank you. Um, HJF South Rift. Walter in South Rift. Okay, Walter in Nairobi. LVCT Daraja. I'm here. Very Kusana. LVCT Steps. Present. Karibu. And uh, finally, ICAP. Present. Yeah, so I, I think uh, we only have um, Afia Kamilisha, uh, Chris. They have joined. They have joined. Oh, okay. That leaves us with uh, Chris, Cap, Bomu, Walter Reed, South Reed, Cap. and Walter Reed, Nairobi. Cap, Cap is Cap. present. Cap, Cap is present. How about Crisp? Yeah. Okay. Bomu? Uh, Bomu have confirmed uh, joining shortly. Okay, so not yet. So we don't have Walter in the in the call. So Walter I think we Reed, have about... Walter Reed, ex excuse me, Atiana. Walter Reed and Nairobi are present. There is Rosalind somewhere who has said she's present. Yeah, 
Yes, I'm here. Okay. All right, so I think we have everyone except uh, Bomu and uh, Walter Reed South Reef. So that gives us about 98% of attendance. So once again, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I hope it's going to be an enjoyable and productive call. So uh, back to you, Faith. Thank you, Bernard, and thank you everyone who has joined the call. I think it's quite, quite impressive and I'm very happy that all of you are on board. That means you're all safe from COVID. And let's continue keeping safe. So without ma wasting much time, I'd like to know if we have the county representatives, Dr. Ekita and Mochama, are you on board? Dr. Ekisa and uh, George Mochama. Dr. Ekisa, is, uh, he's, he's trying to join in. He'll be uh -huh. joining in shortly. Okay, that, that would be good. Anyway, we shall probably have a chat with them later at the end of the call. So I think we can proceed on to our next uh, um, agenda, uh, item on the agenda, which is the objective of the meeting. So I welcome Dr. Oramisi, who's also going to give a welcome remark and then proceed on to the objectives of the meeting. Karibu, Dr. Morning. Uh, Faith, I've started sharing my screen. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, I, yes, I can see a screen. So I don't know whether it's yours or it's Diana's or it's Bernard's, but I can see a screen. Okay, that's my yeah. screen. All right. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Ramisi, as my colleague Faith and has said. I would like, first of all, to just appreciate the team, especially the Palladium team that has really been supporting us as government to ensure that the migration process is smooth. And we are so happy that we have all of you on board, apart from just a few of our colleagues who we are still waiting for. And we'll request that if you can, please just reach out to them because we do not want to leave anyone behind when it comes to the whole migration process. We also want to thank you all because of the great work that you're doing uh, for our country. And we hope that we'll continue doing this. And I hope that we are staying safe. Uh, even though there is, we, we, we have uh, this pandemic that is affecting all of us globally. We have to stay safe and keep ourselves safe. But above all, uh, it's because of the, the COVID process that we are having calls. I can't see you, but I know you can hear me and I can hear you. But I hope that wherever you are, that uh, we are all determined to have this done. Otherwise, the whole NASCOP team, uh, starting from our head NASCOP, is really committed and dedicated to this process because we want to migrate to an open source MRS that will support us as a country, regardless of what happens to us and the situation and circumstances that we will be facing in the near future. So we're happy that you're all here. This means that we are dedicated to the process of migration. So I will briefly uh, just take us through uh, the overview of migration and what is it that is expected of us and during this call and the processes that are going to come. So basically, we want to first of all just understand why and what is IQ migration, IQ care migration. So basically, uh, what you are what you are talking about is the fact that currently we have 742 IQ care sites in the country, and we're going to transition these IQ care EMR sites, implementation sites, into Kenya EMR, so that we can maintain them and have uh, functional sites. We anticipate to have 27. Uh, service delivery uh, partners helping us with this and we have four data sets that you're currently going to migrate and uh, what we have seen is that you can see from the map that we are showing here the, the sites that we currently have in terms of the IQ care sites that we have and the few Kenya EMR sites that we have so most of us have IQ care sites and we have various implementation regions. For example, you can see that we have uh, sites that do not have any EMR. We have Garissa, Wajia, Mandera. These ones are the ones that are not covered at all. We have a few that are in the east and some that are also in the uh, I mean that are in the west. And you can see the concentration of Kenya EMR versus uh, IQ care sites. So this is what we basically want to migrate to. We want to all migrate now to Kenya EMR. So there are various processes that are currently ongoing. 
we have uh, the most important, which is tool development and testing that Palladium has really worked hard to ensure that it is being done. And uh, currently now we have migration toolkit orientation, verification and validation, which is now being done by us, NASCO. We have the Palladium team, and then we are happy that we have you, the service delivery implementation partners, uh, joining us to ensure that this actually takes place. And then now we'll have the actual facility migration, which will be supported by the counties to do. Next, uh, in terms of uh, the migration of the user groups, you can see that we have various types, and we have to fit into these timelines. And because of COVID process, that's why we are here where we are right now. So Palladium team has been really supportive in terms of toolkit development and testing. And this is part of what we are continuing with. And then we will have now the migration orientation, verification and validation and the actual uh, migration, which we anticipate that will take place in June this year. So without any delays. And uh, maybe just to elaborate, like what is it that they have actually done? There was uh, the issue around uh, exposing uh, selected users to the migration process so that you you know that what is going to take place and you are aware and uh, the process that you're actually doing today is the fact that this building your capacity effectively so that you can be able to use the toolkit on the four databases that you are going to migrate and it's going to be a structured process you're going to be taken through it step by step so that we are able to follow up and we can be able to understand and you'll be given time to just go and test and like what we had anticipated before which is coming shortly you'll be able to see how had, have we, had we planned to do this before and how is it that we are actually execute, executing it currently so after that we will have uh, you as our users giving us feedback on the migration flow the technology that is being used uh, if there are any other hardware requirements that are required for the migration process and uh, we will be able to get this feedback from you and then in june we anticipate that we will be able to have uh, we will be able to review and adopt the testing and validation findings so that we can now be able to guide the positive adjustment the development of the toolkit technology so previously how we had we had anticipated to approach this the initial approach how we had anticipated before the current pandemic that has hit all of us globally is that we had anticipated that we will be able to have a session where we are all together in a conference like setting and we are going to go through all the technical aspects of the migration toolkit and take you through the procedures in a conference setting where we were all going to sit together as the 27 uh, our partners that we had hoped will be able to attend. And then we were going to give you time to interrogate the tool, assess its usability, and we were going to get one on one feedback because it was going to be in a conference setting. But for now, due to what we are all aware of, we are going to we have changed the approach and so the current approach is that we are going to have these virtual collaborations these virtual meetings we will take you through the migration toolkits and all the available resources will be shared electronically so we'll send to you via email and then uh these uh, sessions will also be able to just interact with you it will not be a face-to-face -face interaction but it will be an online interaction process with you as our participants so that we can be able to take you through all the sessions and the resource materials that we have. So unlike what we had anticipated to have previously, where we're going to get feedback from you during the conference sessions, where we hope to that by the time we finish the conference, we have all the feedback put together. This time around, the approach is going to be slightly different. We are going to give you time. We'll give you two weeks from today where you're going to have time to just go through the tools and at the end, we are going to have virtual sessions so that now we can be able to share again our feedback uh, after you have been after we've given you time to just go through the tools, interrogate them and get feedback from what is it that you are able to actually get. Uh, this thing is taking a bit long. So today we that's the approach that we want to take. So basically what we are trying to say in a nutshell what is it that we want you to 
to do by the end of today. So we want you to ensure that you are actually very clear. What are your roles? What are your responsibilities as our service delivery implementing partners by the time we finish the migration process? So that's very, very critical for you to understand what exactly do we expect you to do? We also expect that uh, by the end of this, you'll be familiar with what are the requirements for the migration process. So you know your roles, you know your responsibilities, you know your required your requirements for the migration process and then please just take your time to listen in so that you can be able to be capacity built and you're able to understand how the process is going to take place from the beginning to the end and we also want you to start developing your level uh, your level migration roadmap so that you can be able to to, to pick things and piece things together at the end of it all so there's a schedule that we have come up with that will help you uh, throughout the process until we, we finally uh, able to do the migration process. So as of today, if you can see from the activity schedule that is shared on your screens, is that today one of the activities that we have is the online orientation process. And what we expect to do is that we are going to have all of us as the teams, the 27 service delivery implementing partners, NASCOP, our counties together. And it is this this in this particular session, we expect that we are going to do induction and that the stakeholders at the end of it all, you will all be aware of what are your expected roles, what are your expected responsibilities, and how are you going to do this whole process. And then between now and 24th April, which is next week, there will be software set up processes and testing. And this will be done you, where you'll be having daily checks with the Palladium team point persons for each service delivery partner. I know the Palladium team, Bernard and uh, Diana are here, and they will be able to share this who is supporting which service delivery partner at the end of it all. So in this, we expect that between now and next week that we will have the software set up and it is working correctly and we are able now to start the testing process. Then after that, we expect that by, uh, between 27th and 30th April this year, we'll also start the data validation and documentation of issues and gaps that you are able to identify because there's nothing that is perfect, but we want to really get that. And we are also going to continuously have this daily checks with the Palladium team because you remember that each of us is going to be assigned a person, a point person within the Palladium team who will be supporting each service delivery partner. And we are going to have at least a minimum of two DBS tested and feedback documentation in a structured template. So all this will be picked together. And then on 30th April, we will now have, because it will now you see that it's within the two weeks that we have given, we'll have again an online feedback session so that we can be able to consolidate our experiences, our issues and the gaps that we identified. So we'll have another meeting where now we are able to review the entire process and document what will be our way forward. And then um, after that, we will have now development and updating of the migration toolkit components. And Palladium will continuously be providing us feedback as we continue with the process updates on the toolkit. And uh, eventually what we expect is that the Palladium point persons are going to ensure that each of us, the service delivery partners, are aware of any changes, are aware of any updates, and that these changes, updates are continuously becoming available to us. So we really appreciate you all for logging in and we hope that you are able to just give yourselves for the two hours that we expect to be together so that you can be able to go through this. Thank you, Faith, and back and over to you. Thank you very Thank much, you very uh, much. Uh, Dr. Ramiti, uh, for the elaborate, um, ob I mean, objective of the session. We really appreciate. And I hope Dr. Ekisa and the CHRIO rep have been able to join. I'm, um, I'm told Ole Kempua must be somewhere and Mike has joined. So hold, we will hear from you at the end of the session. So we will move on to our next session where Patrick W. and Bernard are taking us through the technical migration overview. Bernard and uh, Patrick. Okay, um, thank you, Faith. So uh, I just want to share the screen so that everyone uh, is able to follow uh, just in a minute.
So I hope everyone is able to see my screen. Uh, if you are able to see, you can maybe say so through a text. So this session we are going to co-facilitate with Patrick Wango. Patrick Wango is uh, one of our uh, developers. Uh, and Patrick will take us through the migration prerequisites, all those items and the dependencies that we need uh, before we set up for migration. So in this session, I'm going to take you through just a technical overview on uh, what it will take us to do uh, a migration. Uh, but first, uh, I'll take you through the vision and scope of the migration service that we are packaging. So first, the vision is uh, to have a seamless automated migration of IQK database to Kenya EMR uh, with no data loss, but through a very simple process that will ensure that stakeholders are aware of the requirement, they receive appropriate feedback, and also complete the process in a timely manner. Yeah, and the scope, the scope will be uh, the specific activities that will, that will be carried out during the migration from IQK to Kenya EMR. And of course, with the assumption that uh, all the preparatory events shall have been covered within the migration uh, roadmap uh, that we have. So if you look at the migration service as a package, uh, it has been, it's a package of uh, four distinct steps. Uh, which involves uh, the pre-migration phase. So there'll be a set of activities that will take place in the pre-migration phase, including the site preparations and also the pre-migration engagement with all the stakeholders, including the facility leadership and everyone, who, everyone else who needs to know uh, about uh, the migration. Uh, then the second phase will be the migration phase. Uh, so this will be the actual migration where we will have uh, IQK care data moved to Kenya EMR, and it will include the extraction data extraction process, data staging, transformation, loading, and uh, the quality part, which is the data verification. Uh, then the third step will be approval and sign-offs, and this will come uh, at the end of it all when uh, the data verification reports have been conducted, the QA reports have been looked at and everything uh, checks out. And uh, we'll be having a checklist that uh, guys will go through. So if everything in, in that checklist checks out, uh, that means the migration has been a success. Then there'll be final approval and sign off uh, by various stakeholders. And uh, the last process there will be the post-migration support, which will be a continuous thing right after the migration, because we believe that um, these facilities have been using IQ care and moving them to a, a new platform will require constant support. So there will be that continuous post-migration capacity development, uh, usage monitoring, and also post-migration technical support that will be provided by our ABO uh, service delivery partners. Then uh, the migration will be using an ETL approach. So we have the data extraction, data transformation, and loading. So this will be a very simple three steps approach uh, where we'll get data from IQ care, transform it and stage it, and then load it into Kenya EMR, as simple as that. And the tools of trade at this point will be two. Uh, uh, technologies. We have the Pentaho data integration. So this is a piece of software that we'll be relying upon to kind of help us in doing the uh, migration bit. And also on OpenMRS, which is Kenya Yemar in quotes, we are going to have uh, a, a new module called the spreadsheet module, which will uh, help us to migrate uh, or load the data into Kenya Yemar. So those are two migration technologies that we'll be relying upon to achieve the ETL uh, approach that we are adopting. So about the Pentaho, Pentaho is a software and it's available, it's an open source software available online. Uh, and uh, it provides the ETL capabilities that facilitates the process of uh, extracting, cleansing and storing data using a uniform and consistent format that is accessible and relevant to all the users. And it enables uh, you to build transformations and run scheduled jobs. 
as you will see uh, in our next session. And this screen, um, this is a Pentaho screen, and when you're doing your migration, you are likely to see such a window where you'll be seeing the data being extracted, processed, and you'll be, it will be taking each data set once it has completed uh, working on it. So this is how um, the Pentaho interface looks like. It's uh, very interactive and very easier to use, as you'll find out. Um, so once every data set has been processed, you will see a, a green tick against it means it is successful. If it is not successful, you are likely to see a, a red X. That means something is wrong and maybe your data is not being extracted uh, as it should. And that means there's a problem uh, maybe within the data set or somewhere within the connection. So you will see such a screen as you do um, uh, the migration. So in summary, you realize that the migration takes just about eight key steps uh, that you'll be able to go through for you to have a, a successful migration. So I've talked about the pre-migration activities as step one. I've talked about uh, the pre-migration data validations. Those validations uh, that you love to carry out on your data before you migrate so that at the end of the day, when the migration is complete, you are able to say, okay, what the end result is uh, looking exactly like the uh, like what I saw before I started. So that means that maybe all your data is uh, migrated successfully. Uh, then we have the setup migration prerequisites. So you will need to set up some applications. You love you need to set up the environment to enable you conduct the migration, and this will include uh, various pieces of software and applications that you will need to install on your machine for you to do uh, the migration. So once you set up those, the next step is now to um, load data, uh, uh, set up the PDI, I mean, you set up the Pentaho data integration tool, and then extract and transform data from IQCare. Then the next step is to load that data into Kenya EMR using the spreadsheet uh, model that I've already talked about. Then once that process is completed successfully, the next step is to do the refresh of the ETL on Kenya EMR. For those who are familiar with Kenya EMR, there is a, a functionality for refreshing the ETL so that your reports can be populated and you can start seeing your data on the uh, facility dashboard and also within uh, your reports. Then the, another very important step is the data validation and verification, uh, which uh, we are also going to go through within this call. The, the, the set of validation and verification processes that you have to carry out to be sure that the data is successfully migrated and your reports look the way they are supposed to look and you are satisfied. So it will be a very important uh, step in migration, just to be sure that the data integrity and quality is maintained. So that will be that is the summary of the stages that you need to go through um, as you do your, your migration. Yeah, so it ends there. Uh, and I think I also want to encourage all the participants uh, at this point, if you have a question or anything that maybe you need clarity on, please do so on the text. You can just type your question and we'll be having uh, a team looking at it and responding in real time uh, throughout the course of this call. Okay, so at that, as at this point, I'll ask Patrick Wango, if he's on the call, to just uh, take us through uh, the prerequisites, what we need to have before we start the migration process. Yes, Patrick. Good morning, everyone. Um, we have a uh, one slide that summarizes all the prerequisites and the steps. I think Oceano can load it. Patrick? Patrick. Yep. Um, the, the, there was a slider that was summarizing all the prerequisites that, that was in, um, in an Excel sheet. 
and uh, basically it, it included all the prerequisites that we required. But basically we anticipate that um, for the for the actual migration, we will we would require to have a machine that is preloaded with a with a functional ICT system. So the presumption is that we'll have an ICT system that has been running. Next, um, we'll have um, we, we, we anticipate to have the PBI tool in that particular machine so that we can transfer data to the to the a repository that would be used to ship the, the, the data to, to the senior EMR. So I'll be, I'll be sharing that in a minute. Let me share my screen. Yes, here it is. Here is the um, here is the slider. So there are basically three major steps. So I'll focus on the migration tool, tool setup as being the first step where we have, um, as I had said, a correct ICT version at site. And basically, this is a functional ICT system. The first step that you're going to do is first make sure that you have basically backed up this data and we, the, the strategy that we're using is to upload the data to Duati so that we can have a, a base or rather a baseline set of indicators that we can compare with pre and post migration. So after that, the next step is to make sure that we, we load the PDI tool. The PDI tool, as I said, is basically used to, to extract data from ICT. And uh, this CDI tool has some prerequisites, and the first one is a MySQL instance. We have um, we have we have pinpointed MySQL 5.6 to be installed in that machine. This is an open source database management software that is freely available and easily uh, easily available in the internet, or but also we can share as a package. The second item is Java, that is Java Development Kit 8 version 8 and above. Also, this is an open source software freely available, and we'll share this in the, in the package. So those are the two basic um, software that we want, that we require. Next is a set of software that can help us basically be able to, 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 to work with the, 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 to basically be able to shift the data to and fro, and probably import or export the data and that is what my sql workbench this is also a freely available software it can be it will be used to import data import data and export from the from the pdi to that is the my sql my sql database management system the next is since we will require to we will basically require to get data from microsoft sql to my sql we need to open some ports so basically, it's a TCP port that is 14.33, and there's a set of procedures to open this port. Basically, about two two steps to make sure that this port is open. Normally, in most instances of IT care, this port is usually open for people who are working in a network setup. So this step might not be required for everyone. Then the next step is to just set the Java part in the environment, the MySQL part in the environment. These are simple steps that can be done within a minute or two. Then have a, 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 um, then basically after setting up the PDI tool, there is a one step to basically load the data. So you go to that tool 
and run it. After you run it, it will create two set of databases, that is the migration SC and migration PR. Let me explain further. Migration SC is a staging database. A staging database is where we will have all the data extract, extracted as is from IT care without having been manipulated in any way. And the purpose of this stage is to make sure that we have collected all the data that we want in a verifiable way such that data the way it was entered in IT care, it can be visualized in the migration staging database. The next database is called migration PR. We understand this is the transform, migration transform. We understand that IT care, Kenya EMR has a very specific way of, um, of, of saving data in a concept format. And uh, from the staging database, we transform this data into into concepts that can be saved into into Kenya EMR and this database will be used by the specific module to save data in Kenya EMR so that now you can essentially effect the migration. So that is the the the, the first migration tool set to set up part that I was supposed to explain. Next is the data extraction phase that Bernard will continue with. Over to you, Bernard. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patrick, for that. So, as you understood, those are some of the uh, prerequisites sites that you will need before you start uh, the migration. So, um, I'll take the next session, I'll take you through the actual process of how you need to set up and uh, what you need to do all the way to the point where you are able to launch your Kenya EMR that is already we are with, with the migrated data. So I'm just going to share the SOP that uh, we have developed for this particular purpose. So um, if you are not able to see it clearly, please just uh, let us know so that we can uh, zoom it uh, in Kidogo so then everyone is able to see. So just a minute, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so uh, I hope everyone is able to see uh, the SOP on your screens. So this will be shared and I hope it's already been shared by everyone, but if you haven't received it, let us know, we'll share this with you so that uh, it will guide you as you set up. <clears throat> what we are not going to do today, we are not going to do the practicals, we are not going to like do the actual migration book because we, it might take us long. Uh, but this simple document will help you through if you follow all the instructions as they are. It will uh, help you through the setup and the migration process. So uh, before you begin, as Patrick had said, there are uh, some assumptions that uh, we are making at this point. One, we are uh, assuming that the, the pre-migration data validation and verification procedures have already been carried out. Uh, but if for the for for this session where you are going to do it, uh, you are going to do the testing. I don't think you need to do those preliminary validations. But when we are going live at the facility, that will be a very valid assumption because you need to carry out some uh, data validation procedures. Uh, second assumption at this point is that uh, you backed up the IQ Care database. It is always a good thing to back up. Uh, the next thing is that you need to check the version of the IQ care that you're going to uh, migrate. So the recommended version that you must have at, uh, at, that, uh, at that facility is IQ care version 2.2.1. So it's very important to note so that if you find that uh, that particular facility is not having that version, you will need to uh, first of all upgrade before you start uh, the migration. Uh, and also at this point, another assumption is that you shall have refreshed the IQ tools. 
because we are going to uh, get data from IQ tools to upload in the national data warehouse using using the DWAPI tool. So you need to refresh the IQ tool successfully. Uh, then the fifth assumption you will be you've ex executed all the validation script and that that one also goes with the pre-migration data validations. Uh, then uh, what you need to do next is to upload data using the data using the DWAPI tool. You need to upload all the uh, the, the three dockets, the MPI, the care and treatment, and the HTS. And also there will be a very sp uh, special docket created, particularly for migration, which will also be able to show you some of the uh, data quality issues within IQ care right before um, you, up, you migrate. Then uh, the last one is you need to generate the 731 report in IQ tools and keep that copy separately because after migration you may want to compare notes and see what was it before I migrated and how, what, what is my report, how does it look after the migration. So that will be a very important uh, step as well. So having gotten that, we'll move to the uh, prepar preparatory steps. Uh, and I think uh, we have screenshots and a set of instructions and the procedures that you will need to follow. So I might not go through everything, but I'll just uh, mention the major steps. Uh, so the first step here is to kind of uh, enabling some particular utilities in a uh, SQL service in Microsoft SQL service as shown on that screen. So you'll need to enable the shared memory. You'll need to enable the named pipe and also you need to uh, insert the, the TCP IP port, which is port uh, 1433 in all the sections, in all the IP protocols uh, within the TCP IP properties as shown on that particular um, screenshot. So once you do that, the next thing, as Patrick had, uh, Patrick had shared, you need to open the port 1433. I'm sure at the facility level, this port is already opened, and that's why IQK is able to run uh, successfully. But for your case, when you're going to test out this tool, you might want to uh, enable uh, port 1433. That is the standard, uh, the default Microsoft SQL port. And the process is outlined there uh, just for you to follow. Then uh, the next step is where you will need to set the Java paths because as Patrick has stated, you will need to install uh, Java 8 or above. So once you install your Java 8, you'll need to set its path as shown in that procedure and also as indicated in the environment variables. So the process is also very simple, but it is a very important one to ensure that your Java is uh, able to run without issues. So you will need to know uh, the version of Java that you are running. Maybe you are having a lower version of Java. The recommended version for Java is uh, Java 8 or above. So you need to check that and the procedure for checking that is also outlined there. Uh, if you are sure that you have the correct version, then you don't need to uh, go through uh, that particular process. Then the next one is now under the environment variables, you need to set the MySQL path. All this is done on Windows. We haven't moved to Ubuntu environment. We are doing this on Windows. So you will need to install the Microsoft, the, the, the MySQL Workbench and the MySQL Server. So once you install those, then you will need to set um, their parts as shown on that particular diagram. And the procedure is uh, just a three-step procedure, which is uh, relatively very simple. And again, uh, it depends with the machine that you are using. Some machines have a problem uh, running the Pentaho migration, especially when the SQL server browser is turned off. Other machines will accept, other machines will not. So it doesn't hurt you to just uh, go to your services and enable SQL server browser just to be sure that uh, the Pentaho will be able to run successfully. So it is also a very important uh, step 
but for other machines it runs okay even if the SQL server browser is off. So if you have issues with Pentaho and you when you're starting uh, the, the data extraction, that could be one of the culprits. So you just need to be sure that the SQL server browser is enabled under the services. Okay, so at that point, we've had um, the right environment. We've set up the right environment for migration. So the next thing is now we want to start the data extraction. We need to connect to, um, we need to connect to MySQL database, to, to SQL database, and we need to do the data extraction. But before we do that, there are these two tables that Patrick has talked to us about, which are very important. This is migration ST and migration TR. So those two tables are very important because they'll be able to, uh, they'll be helping us in staging the data. That's why we are going to store the data before we uh, do the actual uh, uh, transfer or transformation of data into uh, Kenya EMR. So at this point, you need to create those. You need to create the two databases, migration ST and migration TR. So the next step at this point is now to uh, go to your migration toolkit, which we, uh, I hope had already been shared with you. And I think for those of you who were able to download it, you have two folders that were shared. One is data integration and another one is transformation. So if you look inside uh, data integration, you are likely to find um, a folder called the simple JNDI. Inside that folder, there is a file called JDPC. So you need to open it in uh, Notepad, or if you have Not Notepad Plus, you need to open it and edit it as shown. So there are three uh, key areas that you need to edit. You need to edit um, the path to the migration ST database that you had created, giving it the root and the password of the MySQL that you had installed. So when you, you are installing the MySQL, you need to set up the root username and also the root password. So that is what you'll need to specify at this point uh, uh, in, in this particular file. Then you need to set the, the, the path to the migration TR also that you had created and supplying it with the MySQL username and MySQL password. Then you need to now specify the source. You need to specify the path to the um, IQK database. So you need to name the path and also specify the, my, the Microsoft SQL instance that is running on that particular machine. And also you need to state the database name and supply it with the default uh, database username and also uh, the password. So at that point, you need to save uh, this particular file. Once you save it, then it is now time uh, Something is wrong. Yeah, I think technology, it's a small technological challenge, but I hope you're still uh, able to see the screen. Okay. All right, so we continue. So you save this configuration file. Once you save it, now it is time to start uh, the, Pentaho, uh, the Pentaho application. So you still within the data integration folder, you'll scroll down and you'll see uh, some BAT files, the batch files. So one of the files that you need to launch, which will help you launch the Pentaho, is called the spoon. I don't know why it's called the spoon. There is kitchen, there's the spoon and everything else. But uh, that's how it has been named. So you need to launch the spoon, which is highlighted in red. You may want to just right click and uh, launch it as admin, or you can just double click and launch it. Then um, once you launch it all the way to the point where you have a, you have the home page, then you need to specify uh, the migration jobs. So these are a set of queries that have already been defined that uh, the Pentaho will be relying upon to do the extraction. So there is a folder called transformation within the same toolkit that uh, uh, was shared with you. 
So you need to open that as shown on the screen and point to migration underscore job underscore one dot KJB. So you need to point to that. So that is the um, the job that is going to help you in doing the, uh, the extraction. So once you point to that particular file, you simply click open. Then uh, now you are ready to start the data extraction. So uh, the next step, step five, is now setting up the PDI database connection. So you will need to go to uh, tools and click on wizard. So the wizard will take you through uh, the database connection process of, my, of MySQL using uh, these particular rules that have been displayed. So you need to specify the connection name and the connection name is MySQL. You need to specify the database type, which is also MySQL as stated in that particular screen and also the type of access, which is the nat native JDBC. So once you get that, you click next. Then the next screen is where now where you specify uh, the connection settings, where you are going to specify the host, the host name of the database. You are going to specify the default MySQL um, port, which will come by default, this 3306. So you don't need to write it, it will come by default. Then you need to specify the name of the database where the um, transformation will take place. So this is the database that you had created earlier. So you need to uh, specify it at this point and click next. So once you confirm the connection and the connection is successful, then you are going to see this beautiful screen that I'd already shared with you in the earlier presentation. So this will be the screen that you'll be able to watch as the data extraction and transformation takes place. So at this point, you only need to click run. You can click play as highlighted up there, or you can simply press F9 on your keyboard. Then the data extraction process will begin. So you will have to give it a bit of time until all the uh, available data sets have been extracted successfully before you move uh, to the next level. So once that has taken place, uh, and also I think it is important to mention at this point uh, that the process will be relative to the size of your database. So if you have a large database, uh, like uh, those who are going to do migration from um, facilities with over 10,000 patients or 20,000 patients, it might take slightly longer, so you need to be patient and wait. But I think my advice at this point is that when you're going to do this testing, I would prefer uh, you consider low volume uh, facilities or you consider small databases so that you can conduct the test and see uh, how the process looks like before you go for the large databases. Okay, so once the data is extracted completely, now you need to um, back up the, the transformed data. So you will need to get that particular database outside so, so that you can transfer it to, uh, to Kenya EMR. So it is the file, it is this particular backup that you'll be able to transfer to Kenya EMR. So the method of uh, backing up is shown there. You can do the manual backup using the command or you can go to the uh, uh, MySQL interface and do, do the backup from there. Whichever you choose, whichever method you choose, uh, whichever works for you will still be okay. But I think it is important to note the file name that you'll be giving it and also the location that you'll be able to back it up so that when you, when you are done, you can go there and as well pick that database and transfer it to the Ubuntu environment where we are going to import it into Kenya EMR. So this is a very important step and also it's a very important uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very important step for us to uh, get the extract. So at this point, you realize that we are done with uh, getting data, with extracting data from uh, IQ Care. So now we have the extract, we have the migration TR database. So we move away from Windows 
and we get into uh, Ubuntu where uh, we'll be having uh, Kenya EMR. So then at this point, then we have some assumptions as well. At this point, one, you need to have Kenya EMR running. So there'll be the process of setting up Kenya EMR. And uh, on this tool, we are going to point you to the resources uh, that are, are going to help you kind of guide you to set up Kenya EMR. So once you successfully set up Kenya EMR and you have uh, the spreadsheet module also uh, included, then we can begin from step one where we are going to restore the database into MySQL. So once again, the important step and the important assumption at this point is that you need to now have a functional Kenya EMR instance running on your machine. So I know the question that is likely to come is that uh, you are at home and you are only having your laptop. How are you going to switch from Windows to um, Ubuntu environment? So there are, I think, three options available. Uh, one, which I think, which we recommend strongly is that you may want to have an extra machine. It will be very easy if you have an extra machine, one running Windows and one, and one running uh, Kenya EMR. So if you have the two machines separately, it will be very easy. Now, that is what we recommend very strongly. But where you cannot afford to get an extra machine, then you may want to have um, a virtual box. You can do a virtualization for those who are uh, able to do the virtualization. You can do that. Uh, and the last option that uh, is available is that you can do a dual boot. You can have your machine boot to either of the operating systems. So when you are done with the data extraction, you can now reboot and boot up on uh, Ubuntu. So those are three available options that you may want to explore, but we strongly recommend if you had an extra machine, the process is very easy. Okay. So uh, how do we restore the migration TR that we got from uh, from IQ care. So the process is also very simple. Okay, so you'll come to the Ubuntu, a running instance of Kenya EMR. You'll, you'll be opening the terminal window, this black screen that you are seeing there, and you will run some commands to restore this data that you have. You'll be able to restore the migration TR into uh, MySQL database. The process of doing that is uh, indicated and it's very simple. So once you restore that data, now you have migration TR database inside uh, your Ubuntu instance. The next step is now restoring a blank database of Kenya EMR, because we believe at this point when you're going to do the migration, the database is supposed to be blank. This, this, the, 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 there should be no record existing in the Kenya EMR database because we only need the migrated data to exist uh, on Kenya EMR. So this particular uh, procedure will ensure that your database is cleared, you have zero records, so then we start from there, we start our, our migration from there. Now the process of restoring a blank OpenMS database is indicated, you'll just need to open the command window and then source that particular database and the database, the blank database script is supplied with the toolkit, so you'll be able to find it in your toolkit, the toolkit that you have downloaded. So we have done two things. We have restored the migration TR, the data that was extracted from IQCare. We have restored a blank uh, Kenya EMR database. So the next thing is now to uh include the modules the migration modules that are that have been shared with you so we are going to do a very small kenya EMR upgrade just to be sure that we have um just to be sure that uh, we have all the modules that we need for this particular migration to take place including uh the module i talked about the spreadsheet module so this process will ensure that we have the correct modules for migration you simply need to get that package, you will have it. Run the upgrade the usual way we do the upgrade for those who are familiar with Kenya EMR. 
you'll just run uh, the setup script and just let it upgrade and do all uh, it does in the background. Then at the end of it, you need to launch uh, Kenya EMR. So as I said, the migration, uh, the loading of data from the migration TR into Kenya EMR database will be done through an, uh, a spreadsheet module. So we are going to rely on this module to help us load the, this data. So we need to launch Kenya EMR. Then you go to uh, the developers tab and go to the administration. And administration, there is uh, one of yeah, one of the modules here is called the spreadsheet spreadsheet import module. You'll find it there. You need to click on it. Once you click on it, uh, then uh, you'll see a migration window. So this will be able to pick the data, the, the data that you had extracted. It will be picking this data and sending it into Kenya EMR databases. Okay. So on this window, you only need to say, you only need to click migrate data set. Once you click that, then the next window will appear. On this window, you just click the migration all data sets again, and then you sit back and watch. Because of uh, the, the time it might take to do that data loading, you may grab, grab a cup of coffee or uh, you can grab a, a glass of water as you wait for it to uh, do all the loading for you for all the data sets that are available, including the OVC, the OTZ, HTS, all those data sets will be migrated. So it is a process that also will be relative to the size of the database and the amount of records that are existing in that database. So we, as you can see, we just about done. So the, once that process is completed, there is going to be a progress bar showing you the percentage and the progress of that particular process. Once it hits 100, and that means all the data sets have been migrated, you then just click home on that particular window, and that will take you to Kenya EMR. So this is Kenya EMR instance, which will be having all the data that have been migrated from MyQCare into Kenya EMR. So now, as I indicated earlier, the last process you need to do is to refresh the ETL. We also have an ETL uh, functionality within Kenya EMR to ensure that our reports run much faster and our reports uh, don't take so much time and also the accuracy of our report. So there is um, an ETL functionality within Kenya EMR that you need to invoke so that the data that has already been loaded right now in Kenya EMR can be populated in your reports. So then when you're going to generate your reports, you'll get your 731 on all the relative reports, uh, all the relevant reports that uh, you might need. So you go to, uh, you click home, you go to ETL uh, admin, you are going to find two options there. One of the options is refresh table, the other one is recreate table. The one you need to, to use at this point is to recreate tables. So click on it and wait for that process to complete. Once it, it, it is completed, you need to just click home and that is how you are now able to start running your post-migration reports just to compare notes and see what is it that has been migrated vis-a-vis -vis what uh, you had extracted from IQ, from IQ care. So this is the last step in the migration process. And once this is done, now in the live scenario at the facility, it should pave way for a comprehensive data quality verification and also uh, data validation. But for you at home while doing the test, you can still do this test and uh, end it here and just be sure that the data has been migrated and maybe give the, the feedback on the, pro on the process. But the next uh, procedure, the second week, will now focus on the data verification and validation as uh, Patrick Gichufi will take us through uh, in the next uh, session. So if we don't have questions or if we don't have any issues uh, with that particular process, uh, I'll ask Mwariri, Mwariri is my colleague, to give us just a small three minutes video on uh, how this is supposed to, to happen. So you can just take a moment and watch that video. It's, it is going to be shared uh, shortly. 
So I don't know if there are any questions on the chat window. I hope uh, they are being responded to. So I think at this point I'll, 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 I'll uh, give Moriri a chance to show us that small clip before we get to the next person. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to attend this meeting. So I'm just going to do a very quick uh, demonstration, uh, a video basically of the process that uh, Otieno has just walked us through. So just give me a minute as I share my screen and then we can basically just go through that. So just a minute. So please let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Yes, we can, Marit. Okay, thank you. So this is uh, just, uh, I've seen someone has requested for a video on the process. So this basically shows us how to do the migration using Pentaho. And uh, some of the assumptions are that we already have the IQ care, MySQL, and Pentaho already installed and configured. So once that is done, the steps are, we have to configure the connection stream to uh, Microsoft SQL, after which we run the Pentaho application. So you're going to access the actual folder, as you can see. And from there, we go to the configuration. So at this configuration, you're supposed to just ensure that the usernames and passwords are correct, the ones that are actually going to be accessing both uh, Microsoft SQL and MySQL. So as you can see, you have to set the URL correctly. Once you've set the URL, ensure that you put in the username and the password correctly. Then you go ahead and save that. So after saving it, you open spoon.bat. So spoon is where the Pentaho application runs from. It's Java based. So as you open it, you're going to notice that a window opens in the background that tracks what's happening as the application launches. Moriri, am I the only yes. one who can see the video? Uh, are people able to see the video? No, no, no. No, no. 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 Just I a minute. See the video. Maybe let me... Just a minute. I think it was in uh... What about now? You should see a screen with the Pentaho migration. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, we can see it. Uh, sorry, yeah. it, was on, it was on full screen. I think it had, uh, you're saying we are learning technology. Yeah? So I'll just pick up from this point. So uh, once you've done the, the configuration, like we said, you launch the application Pentaho uh, via uh, an application called Spoon. Uh, I said it's Java based and it uh, opens a, a window in the background as it launches. So uh, when that is done, this is a page that you get. Uh, the next thing that you're supposed to do is to open the migration job, after which you create a connection to the database, the my, my MS SQL DB, and then you run the migration scripts. So we're just going to see how that happens. So you go to the, with the icon there and you open the actual job. Uh, it populates on the left side. Once you have that, you go to the database connections. So you right click on that and then you come and give it uh, a name. First, you have to ensure that you select it's a MySQL connection, give it a connection name. So you can use a facility and ensure that you select it's a native access. 
Uh, after that, you come to the actual settings. So put in the name of your server. Then put in the database name. So these are the databases that uh, Wango talked about. This is a migration stage, and this is where we are going to pull data from IQCare and, and, and host the data before we transform it. Once you test the connection and it's okay, then you go ahead and close that. So after that, we now come and run the actual migration job. So you click on the start button there. It's going to prompt you to run the application. So uh, this is uh, one of the places that we say, depending on the size of your database, it can take a, a bit of time. But if you look at the top, uh, you're going to see some of the items that are being uh, migrated. So you can see you have demographics there. And if you look now at the execution results, it gives you the process, uh, the st I mean the progress of what is actually being migrated. So when that happens and it's successful, you notice that you get a green tick uh, on each of the data sets that is being migrated. So note that we have broken down the job into smaller bits. This also makes it easy to catch errors and it's also easier to just monitor the progress of the DB as it's migrating. Uh, depending on the size of your database, this can be can take quite some time. So uh, allow me just to move a bit fast through that. So once it's complete, you get a message at the bottom that the migration job has finished. Uh, the next thing that you're supposed to do is to actually back up that database for use in the uh, spreadsheet module. So what is the process for this? So we are, we are going to now go to our uh, MySQL database. Uh, be, being a Windows environment, if you have Workbench, it would be the best way to do it. I know there are some of us who prefer uh, using the code, but whichever method works for you, uh, you should actually come and log into your instance of MySQL. After which, you're going to locate your migration uh, TR database, as highlighted there. Then you go ahead to back it up. Export the data. Ensure that you select the correct one. So we're interested in migration TR. Ensure that's the one you select and the data sets that are there. And then you select a source that you're going to export it to. So for purposes of this, you create a folder. And actually, I think it's advisable to name it based on the facility that you're migrating. I know some of us might migrate quite a number of databases. So it's important to have uh, the naming correct. Yeah, once you put in the name, you start the export. If you're prompted that the folder exists, go ahead to overwrite it. And then you're just going to continue to do the uh, SQL dump. So this is a pretty fast process. It shouldn't take too long. And with that, uh, you have successfully uh, run the Pentaho bit of it. And uh, I'm going to now take another two minutes and just basically walk you through how to run now the spreadsheet module on uh, uh, Kenya EMR. So just a minute as I load that particular video. Uh, can someone confirm the next video is visible? Yes, yes it is. Yes. Okay, thank yeah. you. So, uh, 
the when you're doing the spreadsheet module again one of the assumptions was that you have a working kenya emr uh, instance so at this point uh, let me just resume the video so you're supposed to log in with the credentials as uh, as as you will be provided once you've set up your system Yeah, so you're going to notice that in first login, because you'll have restored a blank DB, you'll not have any statistics on the patient homepage. Then, uh, sorry. Yeah, so um, once that is done, you go to the home tab and go to the developer module and go to the legacy admin user interface. From there, you're going to locate the spreadsheet import module. So it should be on the right and click on that, the import template list. Yeah, so this basically comes and tells you uh, the data sets that are available for migration. Uh, we, are, we are going to assume that you're migrating everything. So when you click on migrate data sets, you're prompted to select all the data sets for migration. And once you click on that, you see that the progress actually begins there. So based on what is on the migration TR, in the case of this example, we have 24,990 records and then the progress on the right side. So how many of those have been processed? So again, this is going to be highly dependent on the size of the DB and it could take significantly longer uh, depending on the size. So as Otieno advised, at this point, it would be good maybe to grab a cup of tea or coffee and just ensure that, uh, but don't leave the room just in case we have any issues that need to be mitigated. So as that happens, uh, once that is done and you go to the home page, you can find that you actually have data, but now to ensure that we have uh, some of the other information, we need to just come and do the refresh of the ETL tables as we talked about. So you come and refresh the ETL tables. So this will ensure that we're able now to even generate our reports after all this is done. And once you have success of the refresh and you go back to the home page, You notice that the name of the facility has actually changed to the correct one. And now from the facility dashboard, you actually have the records for that facility. So at this point, basically you have been able to do the extraction, the transformation, and you have loaded your data. So the only thing that we haven't discussed in this particular uh, session is now the validations that are supposed to be done. And uh, those validations, I think, uh, are supposed to be done before and after the migration. Uh, note that these videos are going to be available to the team. We're going to be sharing them for you to be able to, to basically use them as guides when you're doing your migration exercises. So at that point, uh, again, I'm going to just ask for any questions that people might be having before I hand it back to Otieno to pick up and guide us on the next steps. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maril, uh, for that very uh, important video. So I think uh, we, all of us will now be somehow uh, comfortable with the process, but we wait to hear from you as you begin this particular test uh, on your own. So at this point, I'll take it back to Faith, uh, just to guide us on the next step. Thank you, Bernard, Patrick, and Mariri for the very intense presentation. But I and I believe our, our team is on board because I can see they are raising questions. And I also thank the Palladian team for being able to respond to them. Some of them are around the version, um, the video. There was a request for that, and I believe it's already been given. But more importantly is to make sure that you follow the steps that Bernard has taken us through very intensively. And then I believe the team will be out there to support us. And since we are still on time, it's 10.26. This was supposed to end at 10.35. I request Patrick to get ready for the validation presentation. 
And if there's any burning question from the members, I think you can be able to bring it out. We can take it up in the next three minutes. Then after that, we welcome Patrick to proceed with the next session. One burning question to Bernard, Patrick, and Mariri. Okay, see, yeah. I have go a ahead. question. You can so go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, thanks team for conducting this detailed uh, platform. So my question goes to, I can see from the video, there's a difference between current in care and current on ART. 77 in comparison of zero. Francis, maybe to answer that, uh, that was, uh, this is dummy data, and uh, we used it for basically purposes of uh, making the video to show the process. I think as we begin the process next week with uh, the testing sites, we'll be working with you to ensure that the numbers actually reflect what is in the facility. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, Mariri. Any other question? Okay, so we can proceed to our next presentation by Patrick Gishuki. Patrick, you're ready? Yes, Faith, I'm ready. All right, you can go ahead. All right, so uh, my name is Patrick. I'll take you through how we are doing a validation and verification to make sure that um, we are migrating the right data and uh, we, we are maintaining the integrity of the data. So I'll be sharing my screen shortly so that uh, I can uh, do my uh, presentation. Please confirm whether you can see. No, Patrick. It's still loading. OK. How about now? It's more visible. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, it's visible now. Yes. So I'll take I'll take two two or three minutes and uh, show you what we mean by validation and verification. So basically, validation is uh, a check whether we are migrating the right data. Um, uh, the data that will be migrated has been documented in the migration roadmap. I believe this document is available in the, in the, in the document list that you received. Uh, basically, we are not migrating everything. We are migrating some targeted data sets and uh, they are well documented. So please familiarize yourself with that so that you can uh, be uh, well informed. Secondly, we are doing verification where we, we want to confirm whether we are migrating the data right whether when we say we have migrated five males, whether they are five males on the other end, when we say we have 100 TXCAL, whether we have actually gotten TXCAL, the same number in the, in the migrated system. So there are several ways we've been undertaking this and uh, we have scheduled pre-migration validations, verifications um, during migration verification and post-migration verification. So as you have been informed, the toolkit is still uh, under development. So what has been availed to you is what is ready. We are continuously updating the toolkit to provide you with more tools. And uh, so, so that the reason why you've been, uh, we have done this meeting so early is so that we can receive your feedback and incorporate it in the changes that we are making. So pre-migration, like uh, my colleague Otino had mentioned, um, of course, you will need to do an upgrade of IQ care to the recommended version to do a backup, to undertake a DQA, to just confirm that your data is right just before migration, to run the validation scripts that we have provided and uh, generate the MOH reports necessary for your comparison at the end of the migration. So this is a, is a part of the verification that will allow you to know whether you have lost any data and whether the, the loss is storable, if any. 
and also for your documentation. Next, before you do a migration, you will require to do a DWP upload. This you will uh, involve the normal dockets where you upload the care and treatment, MPI, and HTS for those facilities that are doing HTS using EMR. The next that I have highlighted in red is DWP upload for the migration docket. I know you are not familiar with this docket. It's a new docket that uh, we are working on that will help us track the migrations across the country. Um, during migration, um, uh, like you've seen in the video that Moriri has presented, the PDI tool is able to give you feedback. Among that feedback is the, is the checks of successful uh, loading and transformation of a data set. And two, the tool also provided provides error logs for any errors that are being encountered. So these error logs inform you whether your data sets are OK, whether the migration is going on fine. So these are logs that you expect that you will uh, document them if you have errors so that we are able to review when you report that your migration is having issues. Uh, post migration, you, you are expected to, ha to conduct a walkthrough the, the Kenya EMR to make sure you can log in, you can do a patient registration, you can do enrollment encounters, refresh, just to make sure that the data migrate has not affected the application. Then you will run the same validation script you had run in IQCA, the, generate the MOH reports that you had generated, and I'll take a DQA just to compare what you had pre and post migration. And finally, you're going to do another DWAP upload. Remember now, we, you are uploading uh, this data from a different EMR, so we'll need to receive that upload for the for comparison of the two. And finally, you will do a DWAP upload of the migration docket again. So please note that these uploads are supposed to be done pre and post migration, and I will explain why shortly, why we have designed it this way. So the reason why we are asking you to do the upload pre migration and post migration, this is the docket that we want to use to track the migrations across the country. The only way we can know that you have done a migration is for us to view that data on spot. So we are working on this new docket in DWAPI. Uh, the purpose of this docket is to document the status of the facility database pre and post migration. So I'll be showing you what is it that this uh, docket is documenting pre and post migration so that if you report to us you are having a problem, we can be able to check and be able to know what might have happened during that migration. So the migration docket will ship uh, similar matrices from IQK and Kenya EMR. So the queries we are working on right now for, for migration docket will be the same for both IQK and Kenya EMR so that we can compare before migration. We had 100 patients. After migration, we have 100 patients. The agendas, the dates of enrollment, their cohorts and things like that. So that everybody can be have a visibility of this on spot. So we want to use this docket to also avail this data to all users across the country. So if you want to know how many migrations have been done, you'll be able to come to this, uh, to this docket on spot and be able to view what, what, what has been migrated. So if you are a partner or a county or NASCOP or CDC, USAID, you'll be able to, to track migration through spots. That's why it's very important for this um, pre and post migration of up upload of this docket so that we are able to track this process. Um, so once you have done the, the generated, finished the my, up upload, uh, basically the migration, you will compare the two and you will document any discrepancies. We will provide a template for you to document any discrepancies that you have faced so that we are able to continuously improve on the queries and address uh, anything we might have missed. So I believe the second person you'll be working with during this testing phase will avail to you a template that you can be able to document any discrepancies and avail to us that as soon as possible. So um, what is your input in this verification and why are you asking this user group to come on board? is to be able to test this migration and document any issues that you have encountered and communicate that to us as soon as possible so that we 
we are able to incorporate it in the tool and give you feedback and guidance on what you might need to do to fix the issue. Uh, secondly, we, we want to add you to test with as many databases as possible. Remember, uh, we might experience different scenarios depending on volume of data, the setup of that data, the database, the history of that facility, maybe it was migrated from another system, um, the recency of the data and things like that. So that's why we are appearing to you to do this test with as many databases as possible and compare the output and provide us with feedback through the second team. So thirdly and lastly, we will be continuously doing an update to the toolkit, mostly on the transformations, and you will be guided on how to get the updates. We'll be updating the materials continuously, incorporating your feedback and what you are working on right now. We'll be doing a release of the uh, uh, a release of DWAPI that you'll have the new docket. So please uh, continuously update the tool even as you do the test so that you get the new changes. Uh, so lastly, I will show you um, the checklist for migration. Um, just what is it that the, the new, the new, the new docket will be checking. I don't know whether you can be able to see my screen, the Excel I, am, I have. No, Patrick, uh, you can go to your browser. So, can you see the screen now? Yes. So, basically, uh, in this screen, you are able to see what the new docket for, for the UAP will be shipping. Um, we, we are in the process of finishing up these queries. So, as of now, it's not ready, but it should be ready for you to do the test as you continue. So on demographics, we will be shipping uh, like the total count of all patients, uh, persons. Remember, we have persons and patients, the agenda. In our tests so far, we have seen that we have a lot of patients who have no gender or uh, genders are unknown. So we'll be able to show you those kind of matrix, age groups, uh, new and enrollments, uh, service types. Uh, under HIV, we'll be able to ship the metrics for 731, MER reports, uh, enrollment, uh, basically the, the indicators in uh, under HIV, uh, same for HTS, NCH, and all these other services that we have currently in IQCA, including the recently released uh, OVC. We will also be migrating the users and assigning them a default passwords. And a few things. So this Excel will be provided to you, and it will document. It will document what is it that the new docket is shipping. Um, so you will be able to see these metrics even before you upload. Once you run the WAPI, that docket, you normally have validations at the bottom. So you'll be able to view these metrics, and then once you send, they'll go to spot, and you'll do that post migration so that you, we can be able to compare the two. So in a nutshell, that's, uh, that's how we are planning to do the, the verification and validation. We will be continuously providing more of this and we'll keep all of you updated on uh, the verification and validation uh, plans. That's my presentation, unless there's any question, so that you can answer it now. If there's no any question, thank you very much. I will hand over to Faith now. Thank you, Patrick, uh, for the elaborate presentation on pre and post validation. I believe, uh, any question from the team? Okay, I believe silence means we all understood what you were taken through. So, and I like the pace at which we are keeping it, well, we are keeping time. So we move to the next session, which is uh, feedback uh, and uh, documentation. Definitely we have been taken through the process of
the technical know of how to migrate, then the validation process. And as Dr. Ramisi said in the morning, uh, we will expect feedback from the team during this test period. So there will be a documentation or a mechanism in which that should be done. And uh, Evans and Ajuang should be telling us on how to do that. Ajuang and Evans. Hi, Ajuang. Hi. You're well? You're well? Yes, I am. Can, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. You can proceed. Okay, thanks, Faith. So um, for our feedback session, basically, we are looking at uh, as you gone through the SOP and uh, you view the video or the migration, we expect you to perform certain tasks. And uh, first of all, I just wanted to share uh, the list of some um, key items that you need to take note of as testing. So I'll go straight under uh, that instruction. Some of the key steps you need to consider are uh, PDI, uh, ABBC connection properties must be set. Uh, you must load the migration job and set the connections for the local database and execute the migration job. After that, you need to just observe that the data sets are extracted successfully at the execution window that Mariri showed and just confirm that you've migrated your PR database. The next step, which is where you're loading the, the database into Kenya EMR, obviously confirm Kenya EMR is is installed and set up and functional. Restore the migration PR, load the blank Kenya EMR DB and restore that. Um, execute the migration upgrade script for Kenya EMR. Uh, confirm Kenya EMR is running. You are able to log in and view your clients. And then start the, the spread fit module so that you can confirm the data sets are are fully, the records are fully loaded into your local instance. So once that completes successfully, we go into the last step, which is uh, verify that your data has been successfully migrated. So at this particular stage, I, for your testing, one of the key ones you can look at would be the MOH731 reports. You remember from the step you've been asked to generate these particular reports during IQ uh, for my Q2 before you migrate. And you also been asked to do a data upload to the data warehouse. So we'll use this particular tool to confirm that you actually completed the migration successfully. Like uh, Patrick has mentioned, there are a few validation and verification queries that are under development. The ones that are ready will already have been loaded on the particular folder that we shared with you. So you can run those to make sure, to verify that the results you got at the initial step are the same results that you're going to get once you are running the, the, the Kenya EMRs. Basically, those are the things you need to take note of. Um, in my next uh, screen, I just want to show, I want to show the, um, so in my next screen, right. So as you're doing for us uh, the test, we wanted to get your feedback on perhaps if something should break, something should not work as planned, then we'd like to catch that particular feedback from you. Um, so before you go, we expect you to complete this feedback tool at the end of that particular 
at the time. And uh, so we are going to share with you the templates for validation and verification that Patrick showed at the end of his presentation. Once you complete that, you're going to make notes against um, those particular apps. Should you run into any problems or errors, you'd like to make a note. And if there is any screenshot, we expect uh, those to be attached as well. So in this final step, we are basically looking at your feedback. We wanted to consolidate the feedback from the testers. So this is purely for testing purposes. So we want to get the feedback from the testers in the next um, virtual meeting that we are going to have to look at what are the common problems that people face and, and to help the developers to look into those ahead of time. So I want to just quickly go through this particular tool. Section one is basically about getting details about you, the date of your migration, the person doing the migration, which SDP, and what is the facility you are working with. And also important for you to confirm for us what version of IQK are you running. Like you stated, we expect you to migrate IQK to 2.21. And then we want to get your feedback also on the pre-migration analysis. That is, as you are running IQ2 uh, validation queries, um, for instance, we'd like to know were the queries successful? and did you archive the results? And perhaps if you are unable to achieve that, you'd like to get your reason for that or your description of the error that you encountered. We also expect you as part of the pre-migration analysis to run the 731 report. I know this is one that everyone is quite familiar with, but we just expect you to run it and archive it for record validation at the end. And then we also expect you to upload to the data warehouse using the DWAPI tool on your machine. So that will form the three things that we're looking at as part of pre-migration analysis. The next session is looking at the PDI tool. So just confirm that your Wikisite tools are installed and are ready to go. For example, if you should require an additional tool to complete this process, we'd like to know which one. And the next thing is to confirm if your data sets are extracted successfully, the migration TR backup and the like, IPKR database backup. Basically, we are looking at, uh, this is verifying if you've completed the SOP task successfully. So once PDI run successfully, if not, would like to get any errors that you encountered. And uh, lastly, we'd like to know how long your data extraction process took. Because this is going to give us an idea of if you further optimize the tool, depending on the size of the database. In step four, now we'll be getting your feedback on data loading to Kenya EMR. Just confirm what version of Kenya EMI you are running. 17.1.0 is recommended. Um, we want you to confirm that migration TR loads successfully in MySQL. And if not, just confirm for us what is the issue you encountered. And on the spreadsheet module, we'd like to know if you should run into any problems. Please let us know what you should be encountered. Uh, again, share with us any specific errors or issues that you might encounter. In the second last step, we'd like you to just carry out the data validation in a year. Um, first step is to refresh the ETL tables. Uh, we expect that to run successfully. If not, again, let us know what are the issues. Um, also, we expect to run the post-migration validation queries uh, from Kenya EMR sorry, data sorry. teams. Sorry? I'm 
Okay, I think that's an interference. So, um, and then we expect you to run the migration that you want report just to validate these as, as, as what you had in IQ2. Finally, we expect you now to, from your Kenya EMR environment, we expect you to upload from the WAPI just to confirm that everything is running well. Um, in the last the last week, we were looking at uh, the 731 report and validation extract. So we would like for you to attach for us um, a validation of just a second. OK, thank you. So in the final step, we expect you to, to attach an extract of your 731 report for both for the pre and post migration scenarios that we got so that on our side, we are able to have a second opinion on what we went down. So that in a nutshell is a migration testing survey feedback that we expect you to fill for us. Thanks. And I'll take it back to Faith. Uh, for the walkthrough, the validation, I mean, the feedback form that is going to be used for any feedback to the team so that they can be able to make better their process. Do you have any questions? And I believe it's a question and answer session. And I can see the chat have been ongoing. There are several clarifications uh, in regards to updates of the data sets, which windows, uh, if to use windows, uh, do you have any predefined date on migration? And there were other questions that the teams were raising. So if we don't have a question to Bernard, or if there's any, I will hand over to Leon. Leon? Hello, Leon. Yes, Amir, you can't you can't hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. So um I don't know whether you would like to run through the questions that have been raised by the team, though I can see you've been answering them on the chat. But it's good to clarify the major ones that um, not everyone might have read through because this is a question and answer session. And even for the rest of the team, if you have anything burning, this is the time to script it down. And then we will be able to give you a response to the, to the question. Hello. So I am. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen in a few. Just a minute. Um, can somebody just confirm if they can see my screen? Yes. yes, we can. I can't see. Okay. So um, I'm just going to go through the questions that were being raised on the charts. And I think if anybody else has a question, we can maybe have a chance for a few questions to be asked. So um, the first question was about training. Um, 
Uh, at what point do we orient users on the use of Kenya EMR? So um, we have we have a schedule of training activities that will be distributed across. We will have uh, pre-migration uh, TOT trainings. Um, we will we will also have trainings during the migration process, and we will also have trainings after the migration process. Um, we are going to use the cascaded uh, mode of training, whereby we will we will train the partners, and in turn, the partners will be doing the end user uh, trainings. Um, I I think. Uh, I'll invite also Bernardo Tieno just to talk a little bit more about the, the training. Ben. Yes, uh, thank you, Leon. I think for the trainings, uh, uh, we had uh, three planned trainings, uh, why not for the COVID-19. So we had uh, we had planned to hold a pre-migration technical training just to prepare uh, the teams on what they need to know about how to set up Kenya EMR and what to know. Uh, then we had scheduled to have uh, the migration training, which was also a, a, a slightly technical training on this process that we are now doing right here. Then uh, one, once we have completed that, the last one we are supposed to have a post-migration TOT training which was kind of a user-oriented uh, training where we were going to take the master TUTs on how to use uh, Kenya EMR so that may, uh, after that they can also train their end users on the same. So those are still uh, within plan. Uh, I think we're just waiting for this pandemic to go away, then we'll resume those trainings. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So the next question was about um, Pentaho, the, the the PID tool, uh, whether uh, we have any licensing cost for it. So there is none. Uh, we are using the free version of Pentaho. We have an open source version of Pentaho, and uh, we will also share it with the re, with the migration to with the migration resources. We will be sharing the Pentaho tool and also the link where you can freely get it. Um, we, we also had another concern uh, whether this is the final uh, IQ care version or would there be another IQ care release before migration. So uh, version 2.21 uh, is the final release before migration. Um, there will be no further releases of IQ care. However, we, will, we understand that there are some bugs that are in the system. And we will be we will be just doing patches and fixes on the bugs that are currently on the system. Yeah, I think um, I can invite uh, Patrick Gishuki also to just talk a little bit on this. Uh, thanks, thanks Leon. The only thing that we are going to be doing is patch releases, uh, as Leon has said. We have already done uh, version 2.2, one patch one and two. We are hoping to do patch three sometime next week to address uh, a few reported issues with pharmacy. I'm sure some of you might be aware and three other bugs. So please expect patches, but the final version is 2.21 and uh, patch, patch releases to address bugs. For the enhancements requests that we have received and uh, major uh, cross-cutting issues, we might not be able to address as we are now concentrating on the migration. But once we do the patch, I'm sure Diana will be communicating to you what has been addressed. Okay, thank you, Patrick. So the next question was uh, if we could create and share video. I think um, M. Wariri did this. We, he shared a video on the on the my on the PDI migration uh, process and on the Kenya EMR part. These videos will also be uploaded to the National Data Warehouse Resources page. I believe uh, most of us know. If not, we will be sh will be sharing the link, so you can access any training material in the National Data Warehouse Resources page. We have video jobs and SOPs and anything. We will be sharing it in the resources page. 
so that goes for the next question also um we had someone who wanted some basic configurations on installing ubuntu uh, the link has been shared on the chat um, you can also get the uh, the link to share to setting up kenya yemar uh, it is also in the resources page in the national data warehouse um we had a question on which uh, db connection should be done on the on the job on the job is, is it migration st or migration tr um we use the migration tr when connect when connecting to the to the job when running the scripts for the job in the on pentaho maybe i'd just invite uh, anthony ajuang to expound more on this anthony Hello? So Leon, I, I think, thank you for the opportunity. I, I think it's just uh, good to understand that, uh, I mean, the use cases when these different DBs are, um, are used. So, uh, when, when extracting data from my QCare, we first uh, put that data to a staging area, and that's the migration ST. And um, uh, when you apply transformation, so that, uh, I mean, just before loading uh, to Kenya EMR, you then uh, move that data from migration ST to migration TR for transformed. So I think for the job, uh, the job simply does data extraction and uh, moving it to TR. So I, I think uh, all these uh, have a place uh, for configuration on on on, on Pentaho. Okay, thank you, Anthony, for that. So the next question was um, about the video um uh, they had 77 current on care while zero current on art so this was just dummy data but when you're when you're migrating the actual data this shouldn't be the case uh, the other question was about the actual migration yeah. at the site hello yes uh just on that i think <clears throat> The video was also done when we had not uh, actually migrated uh, uh, oh, yeah. the, the, the regimen history data. So apart from being dummy, we had not also migrated that data at the time when that, uh, that video was recorded. Th thank you for the clarification, Anthony. Yes, yeah, so moving on to the next question, we... Uh, there was a concern at the site level while doing the actual migration if two machines will be needed. Um, we highly recommend, as Bernard Otieno had uh, earlier said, we, we have two machines. So one, we will be having the IQ care environment and the other will be having the Kenya EMR environment. So once you've, you've migrated uh, the data, you've run the scripts to migrate the data, you can easily just move on to Kenya EMR and finish with the, the processing of the data into Kenya EMR. Um, the next concern was having two machines, if whether it will be a once-off process or, or it will be required to have both systems running in the facility continuously. Uh, no. Uh, the two machines will only be for the migration, so we expect after the migration, we've moved to IQ Care. We've moved to Kenya EMR, sorry, we've moved from IQ Care to Kenya EMR, so there will be no further running of the both systems in the in the facility. Um, the next question was on the migration logs. So, um, in Pentao, we have error logs whereby you will get to know 
you will get to know the what is going on, what scripts have failed. Um, um, if there is any error, Penta will will uh, explicitly show you the logs and show you the course. You can also export the logs into a notepad and just go through them. If there is there are any errors, you will be able to know where the error is and what uh, what is the cause of the error, and we will be there to support in fixing those errors. So the next question is: Is there possibilities that some few data sets might require site Leon. to update? Yes, yes. Sorry, Leon. Sorry. Yes, I I think just to add to um, the logs, I think. On, on, on the loading part, we also show the total number of records per data set and uh, the total count for those that have been moved. Yes, yes. I can also add something. Uh, Leon, we had purposed to show a line list of the records that have not been moved, which you will work on so that we can... Uh, the user can actually be able to see what records were at fail. Yeah. So um, the another question that we we had was about um, uh, yeah. Is there possibilities that some few data sets might require site to update because of? database schema of Kenya MR might be might be having additional fields and uh, not quite um, the data sets from my from my QK will be transformed and they will actually fit well into the Kenya MR database so we don't expect any data entry to be going on after after the migration um, Anthony I don't know if you could uh, talk more on that Hello, Anton. Uh, no, just proceed, Leon. OK. So um, these are basically just some of the questions that we had with us on the chat. Um, I don't know if there is anyone else who might be having um, a question, uh, any other question that we could answer. Maybe we could take three, three more questions. So, no. yes, no. yes. Yes, uh, now that uh, we are seeing that probably we shall be needing some some set of uh, two probably computers and uh, bearing in mind about the counties. Uh, do, do we have any plans to source for some hardware, like computers for the, for the, for the SDPs or for the facilities? Or is it just the, the system? So, Yes, thank you for that. Um, I'm thinking we could we could take two more questions, then we answer them. Is there any other question? Hello? Yes, my question is just based on the uh, setting up of the two computers within a facility. Hello, I don't know if you could... Uh, you can't hear you, eh? Uh, concerning setting up two machines in a facility, one with Kenya, Kenya EMR and the other ones with the uh, IQ care. Hello, could you just kindly come again? Hello. Yes, can you can you hear me? Hello. 
Yes, yes, we can get you now. Your question was? Hello? We can hear you. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, about setting the two machines, you have said uh, you can have a setup for IQ care and also for Kenya EMR. My concern is about updating, because maybe in case we switch to Kenya EMR, maybe uh, most of the update will be done in Kenya EMR. So maybe you can clarify in terms of updating AMA, how will it work? Okay, thank you for that. Um, is there anyone else with another question? We can take the final question. Anyone else? Hi, Leon. Okay. Yes, yes. Just a quick one. Is it a uh, hundred percent match the elements in IQ here and Kenya EMR? Are you able to push a hundred percent, or is there some data elements that we expect to lose out? Okay, thank you. So I think we can uh, uh, take those three questions at the moment. Uh, this the chat is still open, so. We will also, if you have any other concerns, we will be answering them on the chat. So I'll start with the, the final question that is from Kevin about the data elements match. Um, I believe um, um, we not quite hundred percent. Um, I can leave that to Antonio Juang to talk about it about the match uh, the data elements and what happens if. We do we if what happens to the data elements that are not that are not migrated, Anthony? Yeah, so I I I think Patrick Gishuki is better placed to respond to that. Okay, okay, thank you, Patrick. So, Aria, what was the question again? Sorry. Um, the question was about um uh, is. Is the are the data all the data elements going to be migrated to Kenya EMR from IQ care? Will it be a hundred percent match, or uh, and what happens if it's not a hundred percent match? What happens to the data elements that are not migrated to Kenya EMR? Okay, so basically, uh, what we've done is that we have documented the data sets that we are migrating. Um, uh, in high level, for instance, we have said we are migrating all HIV data, all HTS data, and the ones that I, I, I showed in my presentation. And we have done our best to make sure that we have uh, picked all the data for both the uh, blue card and green card and those new modules in our queries for data migration. And that's why we are inviting this team to come and have a test of uh, test drive of the migration and uh, using the DQA that they are conducting, uh, the validation queries and the MOH reports and any custom reports that they might have and compare the two pre and post migration and give us feedback so that we know whether we are leaving it behind. But as, as far as uh, we, as far as the queries we've done, we have uh, endeavored to make sure we have picked all the data in the data sets that we are migrating. So for instance, if you have custom uh, like OPD and Deering and other modules, so those ones will not be migrated. But for the module, for the data sets that we are, migrated, we are migrating, we have endeavored to pick all the data. So if, if you find cases where you note that your data is, some of your data is being left behind, please let us know so that we can revise and that's why we are doing this iterative process, uh, incorporating your feedback and all the tests that we are doing to address. And that's why I recommended you test with as many databases as possible. Please look at um, your high volume databases, your migrated sites that came from other facility, 
raw volume, and all kind of databases that you might have. Test with them, document the feedback, and send to us. Thanks, Patrick. So uh, maybe just to add, for the, for the custom forms, I think uh, we had resolved to, um, to, to work with the partners with uh, those additional forms so that we, we are able to also migrate them. Volume, then that is then just for the custom forms. Mm. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, Antonio. Um, so I'll move to the question uh, from Kennedy Gadu um, about having two setups on the facility. So just to conf um, to reiterate what we had said, eh? the two setups will be used for uh, just for migration. Eh? Um, during the migration process, during the process of migration, we will have two setups. That is Kenya Yemar and IQ Care. So once we are done with the migration, we will move on. Uh, we will continue using Kenya Yemar. All the data updates, all the data inputs will be done on Kenya EMR. So we do not expect you guys to be running two systems at the same time in the facility. So thank you. I think I can uh, uh, return it back to Faith. Thank you, Leon. Um, as you have said, the chat is open. For further clarification, you can proceed and ask the questions. And as I have said before, the team is available to respond to any queries, any clarifications that you will need during the testing period, the migration testing period. Because um, I think we'll be on another call in the next 10 minutes. I wish to do the closing remarks. And probably before we get the final say from Dr. Oramisi, I can see we are happy to have on board Dr. Kimanga. Dr. Kimanga? Dr. Kimanga? Hello, Nanionea. <laughs> Ay, sasa ni mekuonea. Ayo tutachat badai. So... <laughs> Yes, Hi. madam. You're well? I'm good, thank you. Sorry, I joined late. No worries. So, but uh, you, I believe you are represented by Ndisha, I think, who yes, was yes, yes, yes. since the mm. call began. So, as we end up the call, you can just give us a few words of wisdom since you've been in this process together with us and also to the team, and we are happy to have you on board. Uh, I wish Nigekwa Nimeji feature. Hi, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, really to appreciate all of you for having this particular session where uh, you are going through what has been developed this far. When we started this journey, we didn't think it, it was that easy, but we really want to appreciate Palladium and the great work they've done to bring us to where we are. Uh, again, really to highlight the selection of this key stakeholders who are part of these calls, because at the end of it all, when we develop systems, we are developing systems to serve a particular client. And in our case, you are our clients. We're looking forward to keep on partnering with you so that you can test what has been developed, uh, provide your feedback, and we refine it and hopefully go through this entire process together. We know the road ahead is not as easy, but we also know that with your support and determination, we will be able to go there. Not to forget the leadership that has been provided by MOH Faith. I can't appreciate you more together with your team because really this thing would not have happened were it not for the request from NASCOP and the circular that went out that has ensured that we are uh, where we are. What I wanted to say really in addition to everything is uh, COVID is going to be here with us for quite some time. And I added that to the chat. Uh, most likely we will be in COVID times maybe for the next uh, six months uh, or, or more. 
And with that in mind, I think it calls upon us to really think outside the box in terms of all the things that we have planned. And I was very happy that we've used this approach for a training and sensitization. And my hope is that we will also work with the service delivery partners to cascade the same one and ensure that this work goes on as planned so that we can reap the maximum benefit of having an open source system that is available in all our facilities and that is interoperable with all other uh, national systems. So that's all I wanted to say. And thanks, Faith, for the ambush. Margaret, please. Um, thanks, Dr. Kimanga and Faith and, and everyone really for, for this wonderful experience. Um, so for me, I'd like to provide just some technical information. I have been working with the team and thanks Bernard and your team for your support. I can say that this process is doable. I've gone through it and I, I've had many people asking about, you know, having two computers. I can tell you I've been setting up my IQ Care and Ubuntu, uh, sorry, and Kenyamar on the same machine, which is not a very um, powerful machine, but I've somehow managed and I've managed to migrate my patients. I was just working with a dummy data set of a few patients. So just to assure you all that this process is possible, I have done it. The SOPs are very clear and the team are continuing to improve them. Um, I've talked to Anthony and the team. They're also trying to make sure that they can make the process even more friendlier than it is. And as you can see from the videos that Mwariri showed and the process that Bernard went through, I mean, it's very straightforward and nothing has been assumed. Everything has been documented. I can also say for sure that the team is available to assist you. We have Zoom, we have now Teams, we have Skype, anything that you need, just call upon the Palladium team. They're there to help you. If you feel at all phased, you feel maybe some things are not clear, please reach out to all of us. And lastly, I just want to you know, appreciate the fact that you've joined the call and, and ask that even as you go through this process, don't think as a developer, think as a user. Use your Kenya EMR once you've, you've, you've migrated all your patients as you would have used IQ care. And if anything comes up, anything at all, nothing is too small, just document it and share with the team. The reason we are doing this is we'd rather hit issues and bugs at this point fix them while we still have time rather than wait for end of may and then we say there are some issues that have come up so don't assume anything anything that maybe to you looks simple and you fixed it just communicate it to the team um, and the last thing is just to the palladium team i don't know what communication channels you've opened up is there like a whatsapp group or something that all these users are there. I know it will be crowded, but just something that can keep the conversations going. I'm really urging us to keep the momentum on so that come June, all of us, if not most of us, uh, most of us, if not all of us, can migrate to Kenya EMR. Um, thank you, everyone. Over. Thank you, Ndisha, uh, for your insights and your inputs. And thank you for even saying you've tried it and it has worked. That's quite encouraging. Um, next, we move to the Palladium lead, Dr. Jacob, are you on board? Dr. Jacob. Um, Dr. Jacob, you're there? Yes, Diana. Um, I think Dr. Jacob has uh, stepped out, so okay. I'll, I'll try to see if I can fit into issues. Mm -hmm. So I think mine is so quick. Uh, it's just to thank everyone uh, for responding to our invite. Uh, we are very overwhelmed and happy with the numbers. Actually, I've seen we've hit 80. Uh, we were expecting around 35. That's including Palladium and Ascope. Uh, we are very glad that you heeded to our call to, to, to come for this meeting. Also to thank uh, the CDC for the continuous guidance in this process that they've given us. 
And NASCOP for leadership. I think for this migration, uh, we want to appreciate NASCOP for leading uh, this uh, process. We've had very good collaboration with our partners, and I'm hoping that uh, we'll work together in this journey. We are at the home stretch right now, and the feedback will really be valuable so that we can see how to improve our processes. And uh, like Patrick said, I think we'll be we'll be updating you as we update our tools. I think what we've shared is not final. Uh, we'll be sharing the transformation folder based on the things, the work that has that is going on with the um, with the updates. So just note that whatever we've shared will not be the final. I uh, will still be updating based on the feedback. So we'll be in touch with you so that we can also share that. And we also hope that we'll get so much feedback uh, from the team. Uh, based on uh, Dr. Ramis's presentation, I hope we saw the. Um, the timelines for the various activities that we need to do before our next meeting after two weeks where we'll just come together and review the process get to get feedback we'll have already gotten the feedback online from the google doc that we'll be sharing but we'll, it will also be good to just have this meeting so that you can get um much feedback and also get to to know what we need to improve on uh, in terms of our tools uh, for cluster five and cluster six partners, I think uh, Anthony has mentioned there'll be a different process that we'll be undertaking, given that some partners have uh, different custom forms. We've started engagements with the um, University of Nairobi, that is the KNH team. So we'll also be in touch with the other partners who have different customs so that we can have um, uh, some sensitizations to them to see how they can also be able to utilize the add-on module in Kenya EMR to ensure that they have those forms also uh, in Kenya EMR. So materials, all the materials will be sharing them, uh, the videos, the SOPs, uh, like Nisha said, some of these SOPs will keep on evolving. We are still updating uh, based on the feedback that we get. And uh, maybe lastly, is to just um, I hope everybody knows the point person from Palladium that you can get in touch with uh, when you are stuck. Uh, Seca, I, I, I know we've sent some materials with Seca. For those who don't know, Seca stands for stakeholder engagement and capacity, build, capacity building advisors. So we have um, four, four Seca uh, team members uh, who are supporting supporting the partners, each has a set of partners that they're supporting. So if you don't know your SECA point person in this period, because we want to work with you this journey for this period as you set up next week and also the other week for validation. So if you don't know the SECA point person, your SECA point person, kindly get in touch with me. We will we will um, link you up with that SECA uh, team person. So thanks everyone for this. Uh, we really appreciate. I think over to, to Faith. Thank you, Diana, for the nice remarks. Uh, I can see time is not on our side. I, I want to appreciate the presence of the county representatives. That's a representative of the CASCO and a representative of the CHRIO. So Dr. Ikisa or Mochama, uh, you can say something. Uh, thanks, Faith. And thanks for inviting us to this meeting. We have followed. Uh, I, I love the ICT jargon there, but we have picked the principles of the migration. And uh, we first, we're going to share with our colleagues as we meet uh, with them on Monday to just support the process. And uh, probably the least we'll all do is uh, to engage with our LIPs who are partnering with us in IQ care platforms to walk this journey of uh, migration. Uh, from the discussion, I understand it's more IQ care to the latest Kenya EMR version, and it's not affecting the Kenya EMR, this discussion. If that's not the case, you can clarify. So we are in and we will engage. I also know the representative of the CHRI was on board. I hope he joined. But we'll engage and still bring our CHRI was on board and our partners. We'll get it done. I think it's the best move so far. Thank you very <laughs> much. Ole uh, Kempo, uh, you're
Ole Kempua. Okay, he was the representative of the CHRIOs who was on board, and uh, we really appreciate, and as Mike has said, we will be having a meeting on Monday, and part of the agenda will be the migration uh, sensitization so that they can also be able to know the work that we are working, working through. Uh, so if Ole Kempua is not there, I, won't, I want to I appreciate... So if, uh, yeah. if Ole Kempua is not there, still just to... Also on behalf of Kakamega, we, we love it, the uh, leadership given by Palladium and Health IT in this space. Uh, we've seen a lot of that locally, uh, together with Path. So for Kakamega, we might be a bit outlier. We already have the newest version of uh, Kenya EMR in 45 of our new servers. I think we just have a local discussion on that. So we'll be talking more of our migration in four IQ care centers. But just good document here that we appreciate the partnership with uh, PEFA, with USID, Palladium, uh, Health IT, Nairobi University, and PATH for Kakamega and Busia and Vihiga, as well for infrastructure. And for NASCO, for the leadership. Thank you. Thank you. So for me, it's to appreciate all of you. And as Diana has said, I like the turn up. We had an expectation of 35. I see we got to 70, which was a good participation. And I like the comments that are flowing in the chat that we shall have it possible, irrespective of the situation. And as the epidemiologist Kimanga has said, it's going to be six months, but we trust God to have the six months to three months so that we can be able to proceed. So thank you very much, team, and please continue keeping safe. And I believe we shall all be well. So I hand it over to Dr. Oramisi to close up the session. Um, thank you, Faith, for the great leadership during this whole forum. I want to take this opportunity once again to thank all of us, the CDC team, our counties, the service delivery implementing partners who are able to join, uh, the NASCO team, in, uh, I mean at large, and uh, overall to really appreciate the Palladium team for the work that you are doing to ensure that we all have seamless migration to Kenya EMR from IQK sites. And maybe just a note to the counties, we will also migrate to the other EMR so that uh, as a country we want to just use one open source MRA source. And uh, you guys have really uh, been so supportive and I request that we discuss here today, I hope you have been able to capture what was key based on our discussions at the beginning of the call. And the good thing about uh, conference calls is that we, we don't see you, but we can hear you and we can see how many people have been able to hear you. Which we really appreciate. We are in this because of COVID, and as our colleagues have all said, this is how we are going to engage for now. But I just hope that we will be able to take up whatever we have been told and you can be able to just follow up with the palladium team we will keep uh, getting the progress updates before we have the next call in two weeks so that you can be able to track our progress and see who is who is, who is where who needs more support and so that you can all be able to migrate eventually i mean uh but, but by the time we come to june this year but otherwise thank you so much uh god bless you take good care of yourself covid is real educate others Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Doc. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.